thank you. Good morning. Uh, let me start with some sad statistics at the beginning. Well, the research shows that 100% of the people die. Uh, despite medicines, despite doctors, despite scientists, we still have to do much about in this, uh, in this area. Uh, but well, we have to give credit to the medicine and scientists. We, do, uh, we can prolong life, we can sustain life, we can do much uh, in fighting the premature death. But this is actually something that we do not have in mind when we think about life, right? When we think about life, we think about the quality life. We have rather something like that on our mind. A life with happiness, a life with joy, a healthy life. But what can we do to have such, uh, such a life in our future for all our life? Hmm? Uh, well, of course, the medicines, uh, the doctors, the scientists, they help us a lot. But please do not put too much, uh, do, not, do not rely too much on the healthcare. Uh, it shows it's only 10% influence on our health. Do not put too much attention also to your genes, neither to your environment. What matters the most uh, is, of course, the lifestyle you have. The lifestyle meaning all the decisions that you make every day, uh, day by day, month after month, year after year. It all ends up, it all sums up and influences your whole life for a long, long year. Uh, well, when, when you think about habits, let me, let me show you an example. Brushing your teeth. You already know that if you do not care for your teeth good enough, you will have some problems in the future and it will be very painful problems. So instead to avoid that, you should brush your teeth well, at least twice a day. And that's, that costs a little time, that costs a little effort, but I think it's really worth it, isn't it? Um, but still, it is quite easy to brush our teeth. We learned that well, it takes like two years to learn in our childhood, but somehow it's still very difficult to learn how to eat properly and how to treat our body in a proper way. It is very strange, isn't it? Because we do have the knowledge, we do have the information about that. We already know what is good, what is healthy, what we should eat and what we should avoid. But somehow, where is this missing point? We do know the consequences, of course. If we eat too much of the cookies, like you, like you hear offered, that makes you grow. Uh, if you eat uh, too much salt, uh, if you eat too much processed food, if you have not enough vitamins, minerals or antioxidants, you will have problems with your health in the future. And that's already known, already proved. Uh, if you if you know um, if you know the consequences and you know what should what should you do about them, then it will be easy. But somehow we have the information, we know the consequences, but we cannot apply this in our life. And why is that? I would like to ask you uh, some some question. I'd like to make a test. Uh, please think of at least five or six reasons why do you eat. Okay. Yeah, you're done. Okay, now pick one. Pick one, which is the most frequent. What is the most frequent reason you eat something? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here is uh, here is the list. Did you find any of your reasons among this list? Yes. Do you have something else? Okay. No, most of it is is there. Okay, so to make a long story short, if the proper nutrition is not on your top, is not the most frequent reason why do you eat or drink something, you might develop some problems in the future. And does any of you had this on, uh, on the first place? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'll he I will have a lot of patience in the future then. <laughs> you might ask why not hunger or cravings or a good taste? Uh, do any of you pick up this one as a first. Okay, quite some. So you may, you may ask why those are not on the top of the list? Why not they, are, they should be the top priority uh, for our health? Well, this, um, uh, this signals the, um, the, the, the hunger, the cravings, the good taste. This is the signal from our own body, right? This is a very clear information from our system, the system needs and why it is important here and now. Uh, and actually, what, uh, what else, if not the system, should know what is best for it? So we should trust it, right? Well, 
usually yes, um, but we have to be very careful because those signals might be tricked by some different, uh, different influences, uh, meaning the emotions and the stress being the most important. Let's take another example. Imagine that you are, that you are freezing cold. It's winter, it's minus 30 outside, it's windy and snowing, and you're really, really cold. What would you feel like eating? Would a lettuce salad be your choice? No, they're not. <laughs> would you go for a cup of hot chocolate with cream on top? Matt, how does it sound? <laughs> you, your choice will be quite easy. Is, the, is this chocolate good for you? Is it healthy? What would you freeze yourself every day, a couple, couple of times of the day, and you will have uh, each time a cup of hot chocolate? What would be good for you in the long term? This is the trick that we have to be really, really careful. Uh, if our body is under stress, in this case is the temperature stress, the body signals us to, to, um, to act very quick, instantly, at that very moment to, pr to pro protect the body. So you would go for something sweet, for something fatty, and for something warm. You would avoid raw food and under-processed food. So actually, the problem is not with the, with, the, with the taste, with the signals of our body, but the situation, the context our body is in. Imagine uh, that uh, other situations, other stresses. Well, for example, if you feel uh, you are sick, if you are injured, if you have fever, if you have inflammation, what would you eat? For example, what would you what would you eat if you feel tired, uh, if you feel sleepy? Probably you are lacking of the vitamins and uh, antioxidants, and you are under metabolic stress and oxidative stress. What about emotions? What would you feel? Uh, what would you eat if you feel sad and worried? What if you uh, what if you feel depressed and excluded from the society? All these emotions affect our hunger, our appetite, and thus have the consequences in our future life. Uh, there is one another, another issue of losing the weight. Imagine that you're feeling too fat and you must lose weight. You imagine that you have to deprive, deprive yourself of the calories, you deprive yourself of the choice of the food you can make, and you deprive yourself of the the freedom and the, and the choice and the pleasure of eating. That's a lot of stress. And sometimes people uh, who want to lose weight, they, they fail at the very beginning. They start to gain weight before even they start doing something uh, or, or dieting. Right? It's only the stress that causes them to already pick up and choose the fatty, the salty, and uh, the sweet things, what they, what they eat. That happens very often in our with our patients or with people who become our patients because that's how we deal with them afterwards. Another issue is, the, is our taste. Why not our good taste and the taste of pleasure cannot be the first one, the top priority why we eat? Uh, it's also because it can be tricked very easily. Our senses, meaning the, the vision, the smell, the, the taste, the touch, uh, are designed to discover, to, to distinguish between, um, for example, rotten apple and a good apple. This is something that we can see, that we can experience with our senses, that is easy for us to understand and to tell the difference. Uh, and this is how it used to be for a long, long years. Now, thanks to technology, well, thanks to technology, the food processing, uh, we have a third version of the, well, let's, let's keep this, um, uh, this example, an apple. Uh, we can have an apple, uh, for example, um, that was not organic, that, was, that is full of toxins, of uh, heavy metals, of, of traces of pesticides, herbicides, and all the things that are not very good to our health. But with our senses, we cannot tell the difference. It is too subtle, and we cannot see which, is, which one is better, which is not. If we go to the shop and we have an apple that is organic and the other apple, which is three times less expensive, we would, and we don't see any difference, we would buy the one that is less expensive. Right? If our senses cannot tell the difference, we go to our reason, and the reason says, just pick up the one that is, that is less expensive. That's, that's wise, isn't it? But somehow, well, all these toxins that we eat, they end up in our body and they have to be processed somehow and they do have effect on our system. Well, the, the other question, the other big issue is why such food uh, is available on the market? If we cannot tell the difference, why is it there that we can buy it? 
Well, it's another very, very big story, and I, I think it has much to do with the priorities of the food producers. If for them the money, the income is on the top, is on the first place why they produce food and not the food that should be healthy for the nation, for the people, then we might also have problems with the health. And then we better watch out and we better really carefully choose the food that we, that we buy and that we eat. Mm -hmm. So what can we do about that? Well, first of all, choose your food wisely. Do not depend on your senses. Do not depend on, the, uh, on your appetite and your hunger. Be aware it might be tricked, it might be not true, it might be not beneficial for you in the long term, not only in the short term. So read the labels, read the certificates and go and buy less but better quality. It will really pay off in the future. And the second thing about the stress, deal with the stressful, si stressful situations. You already know that it will happen in your life, that you, it's, it's part of our life, that we are under different, different stresses, different tenses. But we know about it, we can, uh, we can pre predict, we can avoid the stresses, we can prepare ourselves for that. That goes, for example, with brushing our teeth, right? We already know what's the consequences we want to avoid. That's why every day we brush our teeth. The same goes also for the temperature stress, for example. If it's cold outside, I already know that, uh, that it will be freezing, it will be unpleasant to my body, so I put a jacket and a cap and a, and a scarf. Uh, sometimes it takes uh, a little bit longer time to learn how to protect our body from the temperature. Right? The teeth, brushing our teeth, it takes like two or three years to learn. With wearing a scarf and a cap, it takes sometimes 20 years, 25 years. When our mothers remind us constantly please take the, the gloves and the cap before you go outside, otherwise you get cold. But still, we know, we learn, we apply that. And the same should go for any other parts of our body, for any other stresses. We know that we have to sleep, and if you don't sleep, you will have also the stress. You know that you have to relax, you know that you have to eat the proper things to avoid the metabolic stress or oxidative stress. So just please do that, apply that in your life. If you learn, how to operate your own body, it will be way easier for you to lead a healthy lifestyle. Every single person is different. This is why there is no diet for everyone. We have hundreds of different diets, hundreds of different things, of different advices, what we should do, what we should not do. Uh, but still, you have to learn how it works for yourself. No doctor, no therapist, no dietitian will give you the one and, and the unique, uh, one, one and unified recipe for the success. You have to learn it yourself. What is good for you? Where do you feel stress and tension? Where, in which situations you feel way better? This is something uh, I would like you to do as your homework, okay? <laughs> Learn the manual of your own. Learn how to operate your own body. This is the only vessel that you have. Uh, talking about the breathing uh, from our previous, uh, previous uh, talk, uh, as for the relax, sometimes we cannot avoid the stress, but we have a lot of techniques that we learn how to release the tension. For example, using the breathing exercises, not necessarily with the food or drinks. Poor genes are also a very poor and bad excuse. Uh, as I showed you at the beginning, the genes is around 16% influence on our health. This is the same as you see at the, at the cars. Even if you have the most beautiful, the most expensive, the best car ever, so meaning you have the best genes you, you can imagine, but no, you don't know how to deal with it, you don't, ho you don't know how to operate with it. You can damage it pretty quickly. If you put sand to the to the um, gasoline tank, it will not go for very long. And again, if you have very poor genes, so to say, you might make it a way better. It's just the way what you want to do and how you want to improve. And you can do that at any time in your life and any situation that you, that you are. It's always worth doing this. Uh, sometimes, well, what, what, what happens if we, if we don't do it, if we don't follow this, these advices? Well, the quality of the life will be much, much lower. Uh, but there are also very m way bigger, um, bigger consequences. Well, we can say a global consequences. Sometimes I say that, uh, that this is a kind of new tool of natural selection. 
previously we used to have uh, the survival survival of the strongest or survival of the, of the fittest, right? We had to fight for the food, we had to fight for the female, we had to fight to protect our family, we had to fight for our position uh, in the group. But now it's not the case anymore, right? Uh, now, thanks to technology, thanks to medicine, we can give help and support to the weakest and poorest. That's, of course, a good idea. That's, of course, a very good... Uh, and, and, well, that's what humanity is about. Uh, but how it goes with our genes and our, and our health. If you don't choose wisely, then you might have problems with your fertility. Um, Europe already suffers from depopulation. And it's not, because, it's not only because we don't want to have children anymore, but it's more and more that we cannot have children. We cannot have children because of the stresses in our body, because of the poor nutrition, and because of the, all the tension we have. So right now, it is the survival of the wisest. We have the information, we have the, so the resources. The only thing that we have to learn, how to pick the one that is good for us and how to avoid the one that is not beneficial for us. And talking about the, um, talking about the fairy tales in our wonderland, I would also like to refer to a, to a very old fairy tale. I guess that you already recognize the Hansel and Gretel. And you remember that there was a witch that was feeding those children with sweets, delicious sweets of any sorts. And remember that those children were not very happy about that. It was not very, very good for them. So my message at the end is, is please do not be this witch to yourself. Do not stuff yourself the sweets that will not make you happy and healthy. Thank you. <laughs>